welcome to another episode of Mortgage Monday, where we talk about some of the different programs out there that are available to purchasers and actually folks that are looking to refinance. I, of course, I'm Joanne Toledo, and I'm with Remax Masters Millennium. And today I kind of want to talk about my one of my designations. I have an SRES, which is a senior real estate specialist designation that I earned in 2012. I wanted to focus on a special segment of the market, those seniors that are going through major changes in their life, and I wanted to be able to help them appropriately, so I did earn that designation. And part of that designation is um, having experts available to assist them that I trust. And one of those is Shauna Judd that I've been lucky enough to meet and work with. Shauna is with Mutual of Omaha Mortgage, right? Yes. And so I'm going to turn it over to Shauna, let Shauna introduce herself, um, talk about who she is and what she does. Thank you. Thanks, Joanne. Thank, Thank you. you for having me today. Um, I really appreciate it. So I'm with Mutual of Omaha Mortgage and I am a reverse mortgage specialist. So I work with older adults and their families. Um, I don't do any traditional forward lending and what I mean by that is like a traditional 30 year fixed loan. So I specialize in the home equity conversion mortgage, also known as a reverse mortgage. And uh, jo Joanne and I have known each other for several years and have worked together and really um, focus on working with, like I said, seniors, people over the age of 62. So um, thank you again for having me. Of course. Um, um, we're just gonna do a, a, a quick review today, right? Right, of kind right. Of the, the basics. Right, and so most of, the, most of the videos that I try and put out there for people to watch, um, they come to me because something has happened in my own personal life or a business, at a transaction fail or succeed because of one of the products that we discuss. And this one came to me, this reverse mortgage, um, because of my own parents, my dad was talking about um, their situation and I recommended the reverse mortgage. And right away he said, oh no, no, no. And so I don't think he understood really what it was. So I think this first segment we would like to just go over what is a reverse mortgage? and um, because there are so many misunderstandings about it. So um, that's why Shauna's here and we're gonna go through that. So just the facts, what is a reverse mortgage? So, And um, there are so many misconceptions to your point, Joanne. Right. Just so many misconceptions out there um, and it's important to really set the record straight and, and let people know what the facts are because it is really such a positive, life-changing program for seniors right. and can help them so much and their families. Right. So just helping them pr protect what they've worked so hard all those years to, to accumulate. Right. So their savings. Right. Um, so question number one, um, so why did reverse mortgages have a bad reputation prior to 2012? What happened? Because that's when I know um, they really had a bad reputation and no one wanted to do reverse mortgages or no one would have ever recommended that and the elderly people would have never done that. What happened and what was going on? Why was that, why was that such a problem then? Yeah, and it's really important to understand that and understand the history of what happened. So prior to 2012, um, FHA and HUD, and the program we're talking about reverse mortgages under um, HUD, and it is an FHA program, and um, prior to 2012, um, HUD and FHA did not require both husband and wife to be on the loan. And mm -hmm. it's surprising, and most people say, wow, why would they do that? Well, no one knows why uh, they did it. And uh, what would happen in those days frequently is that um, typically um, one spouse, a lot, of, a lot of times the husband, would go out and get a reverse mortgage and not tell the wife, and then the ah, husband would die, ah. and then the <laughs> wife Oops. was not on the loan, and so then the wife had you know 12 months to refinance the loan or sell the house. So that problem is completely eradicated, it is eliminated. In today's world, 
with reverse mortgage, both people have to be on title and have to be on the loan. So the requirement is that both people have to be over the age of 62 and be on the loan and be on title. Now there are some circumstances um, where one person can be under the age of 62. Um, that's really going into the weeds right now and um, we're gonna have our contact information up on this video later so that's one of the questions you can okay. write down if you're interested in, and ask us about that at another time. Yeah. Okay, great. Yep. So that, that makes sense. Um, I had no idea and I can see where that was a big problem. Right. Like, well, yeah. <laughs> and and just, to, just to add on that a little bit, um, what actually happened was um, Diane Sawyer, who is an excellent right. journalist, right. she is, I mean, one of my favorites, she um, interviewed a widow on national television where this had happened. Mm -hmm. And in about 60 seconds, the entire program was decimated. So unfortunately, the reporting in that segment on TV was not, um, it really wasn't um, fair in terms of, they never talked about any of the good things and all the millions of families the program had helped. Mm -hmm. they, they focused on that. So unfortunately, people a lot of times will um, focus more on bad news rather than, than good news. Right. You know, bad news travels a lot faster. Right. So, yeah, that but, makes sense. Yeah, but again, that problem is completely solved and no longer, no longer exists. So, um, I work a lot with buyers in the market, and of course, they get pre-qualified, and we take them FHA or VA or mm -hmm. um, uh, conventional loans, and we get their lender letter, and we can sell them a house. But then there's the reverse mortgage. So what exactly, I know when we buy a house, you have a down payment and you fund that over 30 years. Um, so how is the reverse mortgage different from that? What is a reverse mortgage exactly? Okay, so a reverse mortgage really is eliminating the mortgage payment. And we have two different programs and, and in a later show that you and I are gonna do together, we're gonna talk about reverse mortgage for purchase and retail right. and reverse mortgage for refinance. Right. But reverse mortgage is simply eliminating a mortgage payment and starting a line of credit. Um, and it's really just paying off that loan at the time when the home is sold. So the homeowner is never required to make payments. Um, okay. So that, so the, the whole purpose of this, you know, why, why is this important? Mm -hmm. It's important because it allows older adults to preserve cash and to create more cash exactly. flow. So by eliminating, in fact, I have a client I'm working with right now, um, we're closing tomorrow, and okay. he's eliminating a $2,300 a month mortgage payment. Oh my goodness. That's over $27,000 a year in additional cash flow. Yeah. And he has a, a nice little nest egg with his uh, financial advisor, and he's going to be able to preserve that nest egg and create more cash flow. So it's super right. meaningful. And, and just another note, you know, reverse mortgages, talking about what happened in 2012, one of the reasons that the program was changed in 2012 is to help people age in place, to stay in their homes. Mm -hmm. um, we have some great medical technology today that's helping people live longer than ever before. Um, and this is just a financial tool to help people so they don't run out of money. Uh, the likelihood um, is that most people that are retiring in their 60s will run out of money. So, right. so what the research has found um, is that this program helps people preserve cash. So there's a lot of math and research behind reverse mortgage. Right, and if even if they fall ill, um, I know there are a lot of great programs that help them even in their home, which is a heck of a lot expen less expensive than going into a nursing facility. Yes. That, that makes sense, keeping them, letting them age in place. So yes. that's, that's great. Okay, that makes yes. sense. Yes. So, um, so that's what that is. And then um, the other side of this, I'm going, kind of going back to my own parents and my mm -hmm. family, was there are a lot of myths out there. Mm -hmm. And people talk about it. And, um, you know, like with anything, you get these myths out there. So we want to dispel a few of these myths and so um, let Shauna describe in her own words or explain why these myths are there, what, what is the truth actually. So the first one I wanted to ask was, um, yeah, this is the big one, that they can be forced to leave their home. 
um, forced to move. So um, can someone lose their home if they do a reverse mortgage? Is there any danger of them losing their home or do they have to move? Will they ever be forced to move? They will never be forced to move. They have to pay the property taxes and homeowner's insurance. Um, so it's just like if someone doesn't have a loan on their home, if they do have a loan on their home, the property taxes and the homeowner's insurance always have to be paid. Um, but the homeowner always keeps title to the home and they will never be forced to move. So they are guaranteed with the contract with FHA and HUD that they can live in that home forever and ever. So if someone does a reverse mortgage at age 62, mm -hmm. they can live in that house until they're 120. Okay. And they are guaranteed to be able to stay there, even if they have completely used up all their equity. So in the case of um, a couple where, uh, my, my situation, for example, my husband is seven years older than I am. So if he passes first, then what happens? Then the spouse stays in the home and continues in the home forever and ever. Okay, until the last remaining spouse. Yes, until the last remaining spouse passes and then the family can decide what they wanna do. They can keep the home um, and refinance the loan. Okay. Um, just like with any other loan, um, most people don't know this, but with a what we call a forward traditional loan, like a 30-year right. fixed loan, mm -hmm. they cannot just move in the house and start making payments. Right. They cannot. The right. lender has the right to foreclose if someone did that. And the same okay. thing with reverse mortgage. They have to refinance the loan or pay it off, which would mean for most people to sell the home. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the next one here is, um, so your home will be taken away and the family loses the rights to the property. And I kind of touched on that a little bit, but we have four kids and once both of us pass, then it's taken away from my children or as you're saying, they have the opportunity to do what? Mm -hmm. Yes, so this is really important. Um, so the children, if they are beneficiaries to the home, right? <laughs> so remember, you know, mom and dad have to put um, the, the kids as the as their heirs to the home. So okay. that's important. Um, so if whoever the heirs are get to make the decision as to whether or not they want to keep the home. So, so for you and your husband with the four kids, um, they can do whatever they want with the house. They can sell it. Most of the time, you know, most children that are in their uh, 50s or 60s when their parents pass away, they have their own homes and their own right. lives. And it's, it's really interesting. And all the research that was done, Joanne, um, you know, thousands and thousands of seniors that were interviewed, um, you know, it was really interesting. Less than 1% of the kids really want the house. They don't it's want the parents the think that they're leaving and that's right. important to the parents usually is right. what I find in that situation. Right. And we don't want it. <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. So, the kids don't want the China cabinets. Right. They don't want right. the antiques. <laughs> right. Exactly. No, I, yeah. I get that. That makes yeah. sense. So yeah. um, next question is your house must be debt free to qualify for a reverse mortgage. Well that is a myth. Um, that is not true. So um, I used an example a few minutes ago of a client that's closing tomorrow and he and his wife are eliminating a $2,300 a month mortgage payment. Okay. So it does not have to be free and clear. If it is free and clear, then it does um, allow for what we call the reverse mortgage line of credit. Okay. And that line of credit is where we can create some really good monthly cash flow. But we'll talk more about that okay. in the next segment. I'll let you do that later. Yeah. Then, so. mm -hmm. Okay, great. So let's see, next up is the safest thing in a house free and clear and that's yeah. and that's where so this is my grandparents right mm -hmm. they had their house paid off but nobody lives in their house for 30 years anymore or 15 even but it's mm -hmm. it's a comfort thing that my house is free and clear mm -hmm. so I think that's an, that's one of those things that I would like you to explain is mm -hmm. having it encumbered I guess um, in the case of a reverse mortgage Yes, yes, this is a really important topic. I'm, I'm glad that you're bringing this up because in all the research that was done, they found that 
we have, we people, mm -hmm. have a real psychological attachment to home equity and it's a security thing and people do feel that that is the safest thing and actually it is not. Um, it is the worst um, investment you can make for your money because you're literally tying up cash in an illiquid asset that has no opportunity to really be um, gaining any value in the market. Um, the other thing is that a free and clear title is fair game um, for liens. So um, I've actually worked with several attorneys that um, they, they had their clients do reverse mortgages just to protect the title to their home. Okay. So that's something common. Um, but you know, we're going to talk about this in, a, in another segment that we're doing about purchasing a home for cash. And that's really, I mean, yeah. easy at the time, but creates so many problems down the road in terms of converting all that cash into equity. So it, it is a, a myth, it's a misconception that, oh, having a home free and clear is safe. Um, that's a psychological attachment, and that statement is not based in fact or math, because we have to look at the math behind some of these decisions. And that makes sense, but I think that as, as we move forward um, and have more products available. There was a time when that was in fact true, but I don't think now is that time. And, and to your point, Joanne, that's really a good point um, because back in the day, like my grandparents, okay, it really was a, a, a pride thing, you know, to, you know, mortgage burning parties. And that was a big thing. They had mortgage burning parties and people were so proud to have their home paid off. But the reality today um, is that we have the lowest um, amount of retirement savings ever in history. Expenses have gone up, costs for everything have gone up, so it's really impossible for people to preserve both their home equity and their nest egg when they really don't have enough monthly income to sustain their, their life. So right. it's a different world than, than our grandparents. Yeah, for sure, it yeah. makes sense. So my next question is, I will be giving up the deed to my home and I won't own it anymore. I won't own my home because and I that, cashed out. So how is, how is that a myth? So that is completely um, false. Um, so the homeowner always has title to the home. Um, that is, I, I think that's the biggest misconception that I hear when I'm working with mm -hmm. families that um, they, you know, husband or wife or neighbor, friend, uncle, sister, whoever it is says, oh my gosh, you're gonna lose your house, you're not gonna have title, that's not true. You always keep title to the home. Okay. Even, even if you live there until you're 120 and you've used up all the equity, you yeah. still have the title to the home, okay. just like with a regular loan. Yeah, that would be, that'd be excellent though, to outlive your, mm -hmm. your um, loan against that, your reverse mortgage, so. Right, yeah, right. Okay. Yep. Very good, thank you for that. Um, next is, I can't afford making a payment on a mortgage. That's why I don't have a mortgage now. Mm -hmm. So I'm living on a very small social security amount that I've got, and so I don't have a mortgage that brings me comfort. Mm -hmm. Why would I wanna have a mortgage now? Right, exactly. So the reason that people want reverse mortgages and that financial advisors all right. over the country are recommending right. this is because number one, um, it allows people to preserve assets. So, you know, having a reverse mortgage, there is no payment required. Um, payments can be made at any time, mm -hmm. there's no prepayment penalties, but the reality, again, going back to what we just talked about a minute ago, is that most people are going to run out of money um, you know, they have one little emergency. I have one client that had over $20,000 worth of dental work. It's so common. Mm -hmm. Medicare doesn't cover dental work. Um, Medicare does not cover long-term care costs. Right. So having a reverse mortgage in place um, really is a great safety net and again, can help people preserve assets. Right. Great, good idea. Uh, let's see, my next question is, oh yeah, so this, I hear this one. And this is probably the biggest one I hear. Okay. Um, as I'm dealing with fellow agents. Oh, okay. This came from an agent. Okay. But it said reverse mortgages are too expensive. Yeah, that is a big misconception for sure. The costs have actually gone down mm -hmm. um, quite a bit. Um, so prior to 2012, this was another change in the program. 
uh, where they used to be a lot more expensive than today. Um, when people say that to me, typically what they're referring to and what these other agents are referring right. to um, is the mortgage insurance on the loan. So these are right. fully insured under FHA and HUD. Um, this is the Home Equity Conversion Mortgage Program right. under FHA and HUD, fully insured. That insurance is what protects the family and protects the heirs. So going back to your family, um, if you and your husband lived in that home for 40 years and you used up all of the equity, you never made a payment, and then you died at a time when maybe the market's a little down and you not live the equity, right. you could owe more on the home than what it's worth. And that's where that mortgage insurance kicks in and it pays off the balance of the loan. Okay. Um, now, we're in, in Denver and there's other parts right. of the country um, that have great appreciation. Um, so is that going to happen? We don't know. We could have another. But all not, not all locations do that. Not us. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I'm sure we're in a blessed area right we, now. We are. So the cost of the, the mortgage insurance has come down, and that's typically what people are talking about. Okay. Um, being expensive. Being expensive. Okay, but, got it. Right, but we have to remember, expensive compared to what? Right. Running out of money? Right. You know, there's a cost for everything. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, there's a reason why you, you know, we decided to drive cars instead of bicycles. Cars right. cost a lot more money. Right? <laughs> it's kind of a silly, a silly comparison. Right. But okay. you know, the bottom line is that there's there's a cost to everything. Okay. And, you know, Makes at, age, sense. at age seventy and a half, there's even a cost to starting to use your own money by the federal oh, government. Yeah. Required minimum distribution. Use your own money. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. So this is. This is a, a tax-free bucket of, of money. Tax-free bucket of money. Tax-free bucket of money. Who people. doesn't want a tax-free bucket of money? Right. <laughs> right. So next one is, um, so my children could get stuck with a big mortgage debt if I live too long. So we take good care of ourselves and we live and live and live and um, finally when we pass, then does that leave our children with that big mortgage? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So that's the mortgage insurance that I was just talking right. about. Okay, makes sense. Yep, it's that that mortgage insurance. It's it makes the program completely risk free. It is a one hundred percent safe. So the estate is never responsible for the balance of the loan. The children are never responsible for the balance of the okay. loan, or or whoever the beneficiaries are. Um, had some clients that you know, um, pass their home on their grandkids wow. or don't have children. So, right. you know, whoever the beneficiaries okay. are, whoever, that is. Uh -huh, whoever it is, they will never be okay. um, responsible. The house is what pays the loan back. Um, and actually, when the family goes to sell the home, um, all of the, the costs to sell the home are covered by that mortgage insurance as well. Oh, so okay. paying the, the, the realtor fees, okay. um, you know, the closing fees and things. You know. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that isn't very expensive when you consider all that at the end of the program. At okay. the end of the program. So, um, yeah, this, I was just thinking, I was going to ask this question, but it kind of falls under this. So only people in financial trouble get reverse mortgages. Mm -hmm. Old, so that's the old, um, that, that's how financial advisors prior to 2012 would use a reverse mortgage program. Right. Right. So they would let their client run out of money or people just, you know, hey, grandma's in, in hot water. We, right. uh, we got to help with what we're going to do and it's a last minute, you know, panic. And, and um, so back in the old days, that they were used for, for people more in financial right. distress. Since 2012, since we've had so much research published, thousands of white papers and some very well-known PhDs and researchers that have contributed to um, the math behind the program. But since then, it's really used as a financial planning tool today. And I know that um, personally, in, in our experience, um, I'm hearing more and more it's actually uh, being recommended by so many financial planners as a part of planning your retirement to get rid of, to do that reverse mortgage and figure out the rest of your situation. The financial planners are the ones that are recommending it. Yes. And I think that speaks a lot. Um, that it's not just grandma's in trouble, you know, we're having a hardship. So um, 
um, I do know that, and I'm hearing more and more of that. So yes, um, and and financial planners are also recommending reverse mortgage for purchase. So um, I teach for. Um, reverse mortgage classes to financial advisors and real estate agents. And um, so, you know, a lot of times when people are thinking of moving, the first person they call is their financial advisor and their real estate agent, right. typically the same day. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it can really help them, again, preserve assets. Right. So, okay, yeah. So, um, I guess I have one more question and it's not on here. Okay. So, um, just as we've been talking about it, but, what if a, an elderly couple does a reverse mortgage and they do fall into some type of hardship? Is there protection under like a bankruptcy um, if, if that were to be the route they had to take? As far as your assets that you have, is there any danger um, if they run into a financial situation? So they have the reverse mortgage, but then they needed to file bankruptcy after For whatever reason. Yeah, if something were to come up, is will they lose their home? No, they would have to. I would say seek the advice of an attorney. Okay. Um, no, they they are protected under the bankruptcy laws with their home, just like with any other. Right. I suppose know. it would be their situation um, individually. So. Okay. Right. Right. And I'm just not familiar with the bankruptcy law? Yeah, I don't either. Um, and I was just thinking there are some things that happen um, with um, medical expenses being as high as they can get. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. know. But exactly. Anyway. Well, they, there are, so with reverse mortgage, we, we do call this a great protection from Medicaid, mm -hmm. just to touch on that really quickly. Um, because this is under HUD and FHA, um, we've got one mortgage filed with HUD and one with, with FHA. Right. So there's two on there. So the chances of Medicaid putting a lien on someone's home is, I mean, yeah. they wouldn't because when they when they look at the value of the home, they're going to see that there's these two mortgages already filed. Um, so we do call this a Medicaid protector. Okay. Um, so that can be helpful. But in terms of you know answering the question on the bankruptcy, again, I would say seek yeah, advice yeah. from an attorney. I was just thinking, you know, things they, happen. So. Yeah, but they are, the home is always protected under the bankruptcy okay. bars. And then, um, again, with anything that happens, you know, um, they would always want to call the loan servicer. So if they're going to, you know, after they file bankruptcy, they'd want to report that. Okay. So I think that's all the questions that I have, Shauna. Um, maybe you can just summarize here um, and explain you know, yeah. like I said, in summary, what the program sure. is. Um, I think you've done a great job uh, with all the questions and really outlining it, but um, I'll just sure. let you finish up here and okay, we can move on to our next segment. Great, great. Well, reverse mortgage is really all about preserving assets. And there's two main programs, reverse mortgage for refinance and reverse mortgage for purchase. Um, those are also called, another common name is HECM, <laughs> Home Equity Conversion Mortgage, okay. HECM for purchase. And we're going to talk about those in future segments. But, you know, the, the main thing today, um, it is an incredible financial tool. Um, there's a lot of different uses for it. But to keep it really simple, it's just about creating cash flow and preserving assets. Preserving. Yeah. 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 So thanks for having me today, okay. Joanne. No I problem. appreciate it. So, um, our next one that we're going to be doing is about the reverse mortgage for purchase. I can't yeah. wait. That's my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, Thank Shana. Okay.